Hello, my name is Ilona, and now I will continue, yes, with geography now and Armenia. Oh my gosh, did you hear about Armenia and Greece? Okay, it's not like official and you didn't hear from me, but I think they're like dating now. Oh my god, they're like so perfect for each other. They're so cute. I hope they have babies. Yeah, 12 year old girls watch this show too. I gotta appeal to that demographic. <laughs> it's time to learn geography now! Welcome to Armenia. Today's episode, I'm your host, Paul Barbato. Let's dissect the flag. The Armenian flag has three equally long wide bands of red, blue, and orange. The official definition of these colors according to the Constitution of Armenia are that the red signifies the Armenian highland, the continued struggle for survival, and the maintenance of the Christian faith, independence, and freedom. The blue means the will of the people of the Armenians to live beneath peaceful skies, and the orange means the creative talent and hardworking nature of the people of Armenia. Some people will tell you that the red also represents the blood of the 1.5 million mm -hmm. Armenians that were killed during the Armenian Genocide yeah. in the early 20th century, and the orange is also the color of apricots, the national fruit. All right, now let's talk about the borders. Armenia is a landlocked nation located in the Caucasus region of Eurasia. By the way, it's pronounced Caucasus, not Caucasus. A Caucasus when a ton of politicians make an excuse to get drunk. Bordered by four other countries, only two of which have open borders. We'll explain more about that in a bit. With the capital of Yerevan in the south central region close to Mount Ararat in Turkey, which is the area that is disputably claimed to be the historical site that Noah's Ark landed on. The interesting thing is that Armenia actually has one enclave and one disputed nation locked within Azerbaijan. Artsbashan, although considered an Armenian enclave, was actually taken over and controlled by Azerbaijan since 1992 as they expelled the Armenians living there. And on that note, Azerbaijan actually has four enclaves inside of Armenia. Okari Espikara, Yara Dulu, Well, it's a neighbor's country back to the Republic. Really... This entire region is the center of so much controversy between understand. Armenia and Azerbaijan. The population of this area is almost completely Armenian and they have expressed their desire yeah. to either secede and become a part of Armenia or gain complete recognized statehood, even though Azerbaijan claims that they are still in their land. In the early 90s, Azerbaijan relinquished official governmental control over this region. However, it is still a huge breeding ground for fighting and conflict. To this day, Nagorno-Karabakh is kind of an independent nation that runs without Azeri legislation. However, the situation gets very complicated. As you'll soon find out, Armenia actually has a very unique and strategic location in a very dark and complex territory. But first, let's explain the terrain. Armenia's landscapes are actually pretty distinct and quite lovely. The land is almost oh, completely mountains. mountainous with fast flowing <laughs> rivers and green forests, a lot of the farms yeah. being mountain terrace farms on the hillsides. Armenia enjoys nice warm summers and mm -hmm. long autumns and cold snowy winters. Environmentally and agriculture wise, Armenia has been taking their land very seriously. Laws have just been passed that heavily tax people and companies for any kind of air, land, or water pollution. All tax revenue goes towards mm -hmm. reinvesting well, in environmental cool. protection activities. Yes. With fertile volcanic soil, the land allows them to grow all sorts of fruits, vegetables, vegetables and mm. grains, and a huge percentage, about 72% of the land is used mm. for agriculture, which employs about 46% of the workforce. Armenia went through a huge shift in their agriculture after disbanding from the former Soviet Union mm -hmm. and becoming independent in 1991. Long story short, land privatization was established and people could freely grow and administer their own crops mm -hmm. without fear of the state control and demand. There's actually a little bit of controversy though, because although Armenia has a huge potential for renewable energy sources like hydroelectric power and water power, mm -hmm. they actually are more dependent on nuclear power with plants that were built during the Soviet rule. Uh. Problem is that these plants are built in earthquake prone zones, which put them in a precarious position. But even with all this acknowledged, the government seems to favor investing in these sources of power more than alternative brands. Finally, if you ask any Armenian, they'll tell you that Mount Ararat, mm -hmm. although kind of technically in Turkey right now, totally belongs to Armenia. And historically, it kind of did belong to the it's Armenian. Yeah. At one point. Mm. Mount Ararat actually plays a huge role in uh. Armenian symbolism and nationalistic pride. To this day, Armenians can see the majestic yes, mountains that's often so sad. Them. Speaking of nationalism, let's talk about the demographics. <laughs> Armenia has about 3.3 million people mm. and is very racially homogenous. Mm -hmm. About 97% of the population is Armenian, with very few minorities like Greeks, Russians, mm -hmm. Georgians, and the intriguingly enigmatic Yazidi. Mm. The interesting thing, though, is that more Armenian people over twice as much as the entire population of Armenia 
lives outside of Armenia. Yeah. It's estimated about 8 million Armenians live in diaspora around the world, and the reason That's for this crazy. was primarily because of the Armenian Genocide. Yeah. Long story short, during the time of World War I, the Ottomans tried to ethnically cleanse the region during their last stretches of their falling empire, and ended up killing over 1.5 million Armenians. This caused an influx of Armenians to leave Armenia out of fear, and to this day, there are numerous Armenian communities spread throughout the world, most heavily in places like Russia, Iran, France, and the US, with the largest Armenian community in the U.S. being right here in my hometown, Los Angeles. Ooh. One of the most distinguishable aspects yeah. about yeah. Armenia, though, would have to be the language and the alphabet. Yeah. Along with Georgia and Greece, Armenia is one of the only three European languages that uses an alphabet that is not derived from a Latin or Cyrillic-based mm -hmm. writing system. The Armenian alphabet, or the Aibuben, has 38 letters, technically 39 or 40 if you include those extra letters that were added during the 1920s. They even made a monument to the alphabet in 2005 mm. in Burakan. There are also two distinct dialects, Eastern and Western Armenian, Western being spoken mostly by the Armenians in diaspora around the world. Sometimes it can also be hard for Western Armenian dialect speakers to understand Eastern dialect mm. speakers without consistent practice or hearing it. Armenia also has a long history of Christianity, mm -hmm. as historical accounts claim that two of Jesus' disciples, Thaddeus and Bartholomew, preached to the Armenians in the first century AD, and eventually Armenia became the first Christian mm. state in the world at around 300 AD, just at the end of the persecution period during the Roman Empire. Finally, Armenians have a huge love of wrestling and chess. In fact, mm. when Armenia was under Soviet rule, the Soviets would specifically want to choose Armenian wrestlers because they always came back at a rate of 90% of the time with medals. Also, with some of the most worldwide renowned chess players, such as the famous Tigran Petrosian and numerous world championship winners, Armenia is considered one of the strongest chess nations to this day. They love chess. You know what else Armenia loves? These countries we're about to discuss in the friend zone. I nailed that transition. Here's a little story. When I was in sixth grade, I was assigned a seat where I literally had to share a desk table facing and staring my worst enemies two feet away from me for the entire school year. And there was nothing I could do. It was torture. That's kind of what Armenia is like. With this predicament, Armenia is located right next to Azerbaijan and Turkey, the two countries they get along with least. Azerbaijan Why? because of the whole Nagorno-Karabakh conflict, Why? and Turkey because of the former oppression that the Ottoman Empire had put on them. To this day, the land borders are closed between the two countries, and Azerbaijan even prosecutes anyone that tries to enter with an Armenian passport. One of the biggest reasons why things don't get insane, this though, is, is really because stupid. a little friend Armenia has named Russia. You may have heard of him. As a former Soviet state, Armenia has a lot of ties to Russia. However, after the breakup of the Soviet mm -hmm. Union, they actually decided to maintain friendly relations with Russia, and Russia mm -hmm. has been very dedicated to the protection of Armenia. They even have a Russian military base located in mm. Gyumri. This gives Armenia significant backup should anything cataclysmic arise. They also have close and strategic ties to Iran in the south, as they are Armenia's only open land border to Asia. Despite the religious differences, the two get along just fine well, and share a long Yes, why say can get along? Years. Georgians but, and Armenians have been sisters but, uh, since day Turkey one. Share a heavy yeah, history and culture with each other as well. They love each other, however, there's a little bit of drama because Armenia is still friends with Russia, who recently went to war with Georgia over the South Ossetia region. This oh, puts a huge economic God. strain on Armenia because Georgia was the only land access route that Armenia had to Europe. And after the war, Russia put a blockade on Georgia. Apparently, Armenia's two good friends don't get along. However, on a side note, when it comes to Greece, Armenia and Greece, they kind of really like each it other. Feels like, like some really kind people of like each still other. Greece and Armenia just interest. get along really well. Armenians are welcoming because, Greece with open arms yeah. and likewise Greeks in Armenia. Yeah. It's like, hey, you have an Orthodox Christian upbringing? So do I! Hey, you have a distinct, unique language that isn't based on any Indo-European dialect? So do I! Hey, you were persecuted and you hate the Ottomans too? So do I! <laughs> hey, would you, I don't know, just like to maybe get some coffee sometime. To this day, it's not very uncommon to find lots of couples and families that have one Armenian parent and one Greek parent. It's like a match made in Southeastern European heaven. In the end, Armenia is kind of like a reality mm. show. There's a lot of drama, there's some relationship problems, there's cute people pairing up, but in the end, they're honest with who they are and they trudge on through life one step at a time. Stay tuned, Australia is coming up next. Yes. All these, uh fights usually well I, well maybe not usually always all these uh, problems between countries is a few people's fault and well okay I don't want to talk about uh, politics and everything but 
there is nothing really what I can do about it. But if I could, I I don't know. And I kind of understand that there can be different opinions about it. For example, for people in people in Azerbaijan probably see it also from their point of view, same with Turkey, but still you are neighbors and somehow instead of helping each other, you are just trying what? I don't know, ruin each other. It's, it's really stupid. And what, oh, okay, I understand that there are some people who are responsible for this and there are people who could if they wanted to do something about it but they don't but what i don't understand especially on eurovision very often on uh, azerbaijan's under azerbaijan's videos and, uh, and under armenia's videos all these fights same as ukraine and russia now really you you can't really discuss about song something why you write this stupid comments, which means also regular people are somehow affected by this, because yes, it's understandable. <sighs> Armenia is one of the countries which actually I would love to visit. It's also very beautiful country, of course, and what also, it's interesting, their culture is really, well, it's it's European country, it, it is European country, yes, it's kind of in between Asia and Europe, and that's why it also, it makes, it makes a really unique country, and because of, of course, they, also their unique culture, language, um, history uh, it's different country if we look if we compare for example to the to other european countries like i don't know western europe or northern europe or, or i don't know that yes armenia is is in eastern europe yes if we consider armenia as european country it's like Eastern Europe, yes, but it's different, for example, it's not like other, maybe Eastern European countries like, I don't know, Ukraine or Belarus or, or Russia, yes, it is really, really interesting country. Mm -hmm. And very sad history, really, it's, but I hope all these things will stay in history and nothing like this will happen ever again, anywhere, but, well, okay, there are still, of course, probably some countries, even if we don't know about something. But okay, this time I am talking about Armenia, so...